Hi there, we're going to quickly run through the Kasparov Pique game, Tilburg 1997, in the Kasparov Gambit of the Queen's Gambit Accepted. We'll see that Pique does not accept the gambited pawn, which we have seen in previous videos is losing for black. But he managed to lose anyway because of some exceptionally forcing play by Kasparov. So d4, d5, c4, the queen's gambit, black takes, e3 wants to recover the pawn. Well, black's not going to defend it, so knight f6 allows the recapture, bishop takes on c4. e6 is met by knight f3 and c5 strikes at the centre. After white castles and a6, White here preempts Black's b5 thrust by playing bishop b3 because after b5, White can strike with a4. That prompts b4 and knight bd2 allows bishop b7 and we've reached perhaps the critical position of this line. Well, the Kasparov gambit calls for the move e4 here. e4. White could have actually played uh, a5 and knight c4 as well, but e4, interesting line. And we've seen in um, previous videos of this, or in one previous video, knight taking or bishop taking on e4 is losing for black. Well worth checking that out. More correct is the line played by pk, c takes on d4. But we're going to see how Kasparov managed to win anyway with, first of all, e5, gaining time, hitting the knight which jumps to d5. And knight c4, a very useful, useful square for the knight, eyeing up some um, important squares, d6 perhaps, in some variations, b6, perhaps supported by an a5 pawn push. But after knight c6 and bishop g5, that's going to help soften up the square on d6, because after bishop d7, uh, sorry, bishop e7, the knight's going to be able to come in. So the queen's going to move, queen d7, rook c1, the rook enters into the attack, h6 hits the bishop, which drops back to h4, and bishop c5. So black is holding his own at the moment. Knight fd2, Kasparov here, a nice little knight manoeuvre, the knight dropping back from f3 to d2, perhaps heading for e4 with more pressure on that d6 square. So after castles and knight e4 indeed, that's hitting the bishop. So the bishop drops back to e7. Does white trade? No, white drops the bishop back to g3, which supports the pawn on e5. After queen d8, and now knight c d6, the knight manages to jump in. That's hitting the bishop on b7. So PK defended it with knight a5, perhaps threatening to exchange white's bishop on b3. Kasparov wants to keep that all-important bishop, so he drops it back to c2. b3 hits it again, and the bishop runs back to b1. Queen b6 was played by black, and now queen d3 unveils all sorts of mate threats on h7 after the knight will move well he can't move to knight f6 immediately because knight takes on f6 but that's a general idea g6 closes off that diagonal and now knight c5 that's met now by bishop to c8 dropping the bishop back not wishing to lose that b7 bishop of course if knight b4 would have been played then that's gonna drop the pawn on d4 which can be taken anyway, in fact. So after bishop c8, Kasparov could have taken on d4, but Kasparov chose to try and soften up this diagonal here by playing h4. The pawn is hoping to advance further to h5. After knight c6 by pk, a5 first hits the queen, and we can smell sacrifices in the air here. So after the queen takes on a5, the queen is been uh, removed from any defensive duties. Now Kasparov finishes off the game sweetly with knight takes on f7. Because after rook takes on f7, queen takes g6. This is going to be a mate. After king f8, I believe 
uh, maybe PK actually resigned here already because after knight takes on e6 check there's going to be mates in any number of ways if bishop takes on e6 let's have a look at rook takes on c6 hitting the bishop again if bishop drops back to d7 then queen takes on h6 can be met by king e8 the best way to finish it off is actually to push the pawn to e6 forking the bishop and the rook it doesn't matter that black can take the rook on c6 because after bishop takes on c6 e takes f7 check after king d7 bishop f5 is going to win in a couple of moves that's going to be mate after king d8 maybe queen h8 and white is winning so this has been a quite long-winded but very interesting line by kasparov in the kasparov gambit so this has been the kasparov pk line hope you found this useful thanks for watching bye bye